I talk about Sorry Got Enough Akai being banned from Patreon. Now, before I get into the reason why he was banned, I need to explain a little bit about who he is from my point of view. Now, he's a British guy, white guy, that involves himself with kind of edgy topics. Um, the idea of nationalism and immigration in Europe. Things that some people may see as far right, although most people that I know don't see it as that. And in reality, Sargon Novaka himself is not even a conservative. I see him as more a liberal, maybe center left. The problem is that he involves himself with these kind of conversations, although he's usually on the opposing side of those who want ethnocentric and stuff like that. He's always kind of involved with these conversations. Therefore, he's labeled right alongside these individuals. So on the outside looking in, an advertiser may think, oh, this is a white nationalist, white supremacist or whatever, although it's not the case. Sargo Nefakai has to know that, OK, because for a long time, for years, even he's been associated with certain figures that have been considered right wing, far right by the mainstream media and by certain advertisers, big companies, etc., so he's been kind of on thin ice for a minute as far as his platform is concerned. Is he going to be on YouTube for a while? Is he going to be on Twitter? I think he's been banned from Twitter, Instagram, or whatever at least once if he's not currently banned right now. He's in the same category as a Milo, a Lauren Southern, these kind of individuals. Lauren Southern got banned from Patreon, Instagram, a lot of other places. He may also even be in the same vein of a Daily Stormer, although... They are night and day as far as their political beliefs are concerned. But again, he kind of roams in those circles. So he's lumped right in there with him. So having said all that, he was on a live stream about 10 months ago, uh, you know, I suppose this year. And he dropped the N word repeatedly. Here's the clip in question they're referring to from the live stream, and I think that the context in which I use it is self-explanatory enough. This is what I mean about the chat, I just can't be bothered to deal with people who treat me like this. It's, it's really annoying. Like, I, you are acting like a bunch of niggas, just so you know. You, you act like white niggas. Exactly how you describe black people acting is the impression I get dealing with the alt-right. Now you might say, well, that's very rude, and of course you'd be right, because that was precisely the point. I was trying to use their own language against them and do what I can to hurt them because they were doing what they could to make my life an absolute misery. So he's trying to say the context of him using the word should have saved him for any kind of consequence from Patreon or anywhere else. But number one, um, you're using the words in a way that's intended to hurt. So I don't really want to hear the whole context thing. You're not using it like my man from Papa John's did. Papa John's was just repeating something that actually was said by Colonel Sanders. He wasn't using it to try to hurt anybody, whether it's a so-called racial minority, whether it is the people that are racist. He didn't use it in a hurtful way at all. But yet he still was basically kicked out of his own company. All right. Took the man off the box. I mean, he's like not even there anymore. John Schneider got basically, in in essence, removed from Papa John's. PewDiePie, another guy, was playing the game online and dropped the N-word out of frustration. And that caused the whole just rain upon YouTube. That changed the entire YouTube policy. I mean, that, that caused the whole... Um, apocalypse they had to introduce things like super chat like that changed the entire scope of youtube just from him saying that one word on one live stream okay so you know what happened to papa john you know what happened to pewdiepie these things if i'm not mistaken all happened before he went on his live stream and said what he said and it wasn't like he was just raging it wasn't like he was using it to try and say something that somebody else said in the factual sense, he was using it because he was intending to make a point. So there was intention there. It wasn't a slip up. It wasn't a mishap. And it wasn't to try and repeat a word that somebody else used. Okay. That's the reason why he got banned from Patreon. That is the exact reason why. Now he's trying to say, Oh, it shouldn't happen. It was 10 months ago. I'm using it in context. Look, man, you have to understand 
what has happened before to PewDiePie, to John Schneider, to a lot of other individuals that are white that use this type of language. Personally, I don't even use curse words, let alone racial slurs. All right. I understand that if a black person were to use the N word, it's not really a big deal. Right. It's not going to be seen as somehow controversial or racist or whatnot. You know, you're not going to dig up old tweets on Kevin Hart where he's using the N word and say, oh, you're a racist. Apologize for that. They will do that for Sargon of Akkad. Now, in the case of Kevin Hart, they did dig up old tweets, but it was homophobic tweets. So they got him on something else, right? He escaped the whole racism thing because he's black and the whole N-word doesn't apply to him. But he did not escape the whole uh, homophobic thing because he's not gay, because he's not part of the LGBT squad. All right. So that came from 10 years ago. Sargon, you complaining about a thing that happened 10 months ago. That is your fault. Once you get to a high level of success or visibility, you become a target. And you got to make sure that you got all your I's dotted and T's crossed. You can't be going on live streams, dropping the N-word. That's just silly. Yes, I can get away with saying the N-word because I'm black. Yes, it is hypocritical. But so what? That's life. It is what it is. Now, I know what I can't get away with is saying certain things like what Kevin Hart said, the whole, you know, the homophobic slurs. I can't say a certain word that is derogatory against Jews. It starts with a K. I'm not going to say it because, again, I don't use curse words. I don't use racial slurs. I don't use foul language on my platform because I don't want to be where Kevin Hart is. I don't want to be where Sargon of Akai is. I don't want to be where Milan Yiannopoulos is. I don't want to be where all these individuals are who use this type of language on their platform. It is what it is. You could say it's unfair. So what? That's life. Now, this whole thing about freedom of speech, people are saying, oh, they're violating this freedom of speech. Look, freedom of speech goes both ways. Sargon can say what he wants, you know, as long as he's not trying to make a terrorist or something like that. But Patreon has a right to say what they want as well in response. They can say, you're no longer on Patreon. Have a nice day. Is it right? Maybe not. Is it fair? Maybe not. But that's their platform. What are you going to do? Come up with your own platform to counter it. But one thing you can't say is that this was something that you didn't see happening or it, it was a blind side. If you did not see this coming, then you're just not taking notes. All right. It's just like me. If I see what happens to Kevin Hart over the whole homophobic tweet thing, and then I get on Twitter and say some of the same words, and then, you know, I have YouTube contacting me, Patreon contacting me, talking about, oh, we're going to remove you now. I can't be all like, <gasps> I had to see it coming. You got to take notes. They're not going to explicitly tell you the way in which their policy is handled. Okay. They have a no hate speech policy or whatever on a lot of these platforms, but it is enforced selectively. You just got to figure it out. You have to understand the unwritten text that's there when it comes to the N word, racial slurs or whatever, you got to just be able to know who can say what that's not up to anybody to try to explain that to you, especially as an adult, you got to figure it out on your own. And the easiest way to figure it out is to simply watch the news. Sargon, you're a big news guy. I've been watching you for a long time. I saw you before I even got on YouTube back in 2015. I saw you before then. Matter of fact, you were an inspiration for me to get on YouTube because I saw what you were able to do by not even showing your face. I'm like, okay, this guy has a big platform. And at the time, he wasn't even really showing his face like that. I'm like, okay, I can go do the same thing. I learn from you. I learn from others. And I learn how to conduct myself on this platform to have the most success and to reach the most people and to spread that good message of conservatism. Maybe you haven't learned, but maybe you have. Maybe you understand, Sargon, that your whole shtick is being kind of edgy, kind of controversial, on the edge, but not really going over there and being a defender of the minority, being a defender of, what do you call it, liberalism or libertism? I don't know what it is. You're trying to be a defender of the things that you consider to be right and virtuous. But at the same time, you total line, you, you walk the fine line of being controversial of this whole race thing. You, you, you walk that fine line. But the problem is that you're kind of slipping and you might have fallen. 
I hope that it gets his account back on Patreon because right now he's going through a appeal process. Hopefully he gets it back. But he can't say that this was something that was unjust and something that was unwarranted. You can't use certain words. It is what it is. We can say it's unfair. You can cry about it. You can complain about it. But the precedent has already been set. PewDiePie said the N word one time on the stream and immediately apologized afterwards. But that was enough to change the entire landscape of advertising online, really, in my humble opinion, especially YouTube. It, it changed everything. People lost their shirt behind that. I mean, it, it was devastating for a lot of different people, the whole apocalypse thing. Because, look, as I close, I'm going to just say this. I know I'm kind of rambling at this point. The people that are behind these advertising agencies, companies or whatever, they don't really care about context. They don't really care about what you meant, what was in your heart. All they care about is PR. If you have a bunch of articles that are written about Sargon, about PewDiePie and about others talking about how racist they are, talking about how YouTube harbors racists and alt-right trolls and cretins and same thing with Patreon, that's going to lose them money. That's going to lose them ad dollars, investor dollars. Patreon takes your money and they make money off of that as some sort of clearinghouse. But they also have investors. They also have people that will advertise with them. OK, so if they're seeing bad publicity about the platform, that is the easy way for them to fall back and say, you know what? I can't do with this anymore. So Patreon has to respond in kind. If you were the CEO of Patreon, you would do the same thing. OK, it doesn't really matter if it's hypocritical. It doesn't matter if, you know, the policies aren't enacted the same way on everybody. It's just business. You got to be able to rock with it or not. So what do you think? Do you think Sargon of Akkad deserves to be removed from Patreon? I can't say I think he deserves to be removed, but I think that he caused it. It's his fault. It's nobody else's fault but his own. And. He has to understand in the future what he can say, what he can't say. If he wants to say whatever he wants, then he has to be ready for the consequence. You can't remove consequence from action. It is what it is. You can call it unfair, but so what? Do you think I'm right here? Do you think I'm wrong here? Whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments.